about creative urban regeneration, engaging youth in the transitional Christchurch. It's my pleasure to introduce Sally Airy and Erica Austin. And Sally's an educator who works part-time for Gapfiller and has worked in, 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 in many areas in conservation and education over the last many years. We are a char charitable trust that activates vacant sites in Christchurch. We've got a lot of them. Um, and um, we do it with creative projects. Um, they're temporary in nature. Um, and they all um, have some community benefit about them. 185 people died in our city on the 22nd of February 2011. We also lost um, our central city. It's been closed off to us for over two and a half years. So we've lost buildings, but we've also lost spaces where we had memories. Um, we've also lost places to go to work, places to shop, um, places to go to school, places to hang out. This is our central city, or it was in January, it's changed a little bit since then. So here we have the cathedral, it is still standing. Here we have Restart Mall, which is a container mall, transitional city um, where we can go shopping. Valentine's is over here and it's kind of like the keystone for that transitional mall. It operates out of containers. Um, and over here is New Regent Street. Um, it's just opened up, so, um, and it's really nice to be able to go back into the city somewhere with its heritage, walk up a rickety old stair um, and be able to have a little bit of a view. Most of this area is still cordoned off in between the demolished buildings. This is my house, or was, it's been demolished now. We were lucky because we could get our stuff out. Um, we had a good warning that our house was unstructural, structurally unsound and so, unlike a lot of people, we could get our stuff out. A lot of houses are lost. Um, but also a lot of people uh, have had to leave their houses um, and they're not able to rebuild on their land. So significant movement of people um, into other parts of the country but also into other parts of Christchurch. We've had a population decline, yep. And most significantly, I guess, we've lost a lot of families with their um, young people. They've left and gone other places. Um, we don't know the true extent of the population decline because there's been lots of people that have moved back in the city um, to help with the rebuild. And I guess it's continually changing. Um, as people get cashed up with insurance claims, um, they then have the choice to be able to move. In 2011, there was quite a comprehensive survey run of our youth in the city. Only 9% felt that they had been unaffected by the earthquake. And most of the people from the east side of Christchurch felt that they were significantly affected, which is where most of the damage was. The youth of Christchurch want to have, from the survey, that in their new city, they want to have lots of swimming pools. We've only got two at the moment that are operating for the whole city. They also want free Wi-Fi in the inner city. They want places that they can go and meet with other youth, so youth centres. But they also want public spaces that are youth friendly, where they can go into the um, into their greater community, I guess, and mix with other people. They were impacted in many different ways, families obviously with homes, but also their schools were closed um, for over, well, up to a month. Um, but some schools were closed even longer. 18 schools um, had to be relocated or co-located. And now, of course, we've also had um, a bit more of a shake up with seven schools closing next year and six schools merging. University um, also was closed for about a month while buildings were checked and everything was made safe. High school and university students um, got out in force and helped clear some of the debris away um, from the east side of the town. 13,000 students volunteered in one week. Um, this is the student volunteer army that I'm talking about um, and they very well socially networked um, and they ran, Facebook, um, ran a Facebook campaign that got people out there helping. They also did some community projects, um, creative community projects. This is my daughter's bedroom. When we moved out of our um, house, we went into a rental accommodation. Um, in the February earthquake, it got badly damaged as well. We were staying with her grandmother and um, she didn't want to go back into the house until we bought her a desk that she could hide under. <laughs> um, as soon as we moved in there, all her toys went under the desk and then we, she couldn't fit in. <laughs> Um, we also had lots of cracks throughout the house. We masking taped them up um, and we painted them into trees. 
um, some, a creative response to something that was pretty ugly. Kids have had an opportunity to give feedback, I guess, on what they want in their new city with workshops. But that's kind of juxtaposed with um, not being able to do very much to do with the rebuild. Well, you can't really go in there and build a, build a house or a business <coughs> or demolish something. Um, and I guess we've got a real problem at the moment as well of feeling, people feeling disenfranchised. They're not, um, it's not very democratic at the moment in Christchurch. But vacant sites do provide opportunities. They're providing opportunities all over the world at the moment. There's a lot of urban regeneration initiatives happening around the world. This is Berlin on the banks of the River Spree. A lot of cheap accommodation, a lot of people moving into the area because there are, create, there are a lot of creative, like-minded people making things happen. And it's become a real tourist destination for young people. And even in Switzerland, this is Zurich, um, Frau Gerotsgarten, and it's, um, I guess, a couple of bars that are heaving <laughs> come, come after school, to, after work time. Christchurch has had a lot of attention in the media um, and Gapfiller as well. Um, Christchurch is changing daily. You know, there's new streets opening up that we haven't been able to go into after two and a half years. Um, and, but there's also creative projects that people are doing every day. Gapfiller started in 2010. Um, three people asked um, the owner of the south of the border restaurant if they could use the vacant site, and they turned it into an outdoor lounge. They big borrowed and bought some um, garden equipment and furniture and set up a performance space and invited people to come and join them. It operated for 10 days. They had coffee carts and ice cream vans pull up and sell their wares. Um, they invited local musicians, poets, they showed local films. <coughs> After that, um, the Gatfiller Charitable Trust was formed and we were given our first bit of funding from the local council. This is our office. It was built in 2012 and we were situated in, then in Sydney. It was built with the help from Sustainable Habitats Challenge down in Dunedin. It's a sub-consent building. Um, it's off the grid and we borrow Wi-Fi. So sub-consent means that it's small enough that we don't need a building consent. It's now situated right beside the Pallet Pavilion, so it's also movable. This is one of our hit projects, You've prob you might have heard about it. It's the Dancer Mat. It's a dance floor with speakers and lights. You plug in your iPhone or a music device, you put money in the slot, $2, and you get half an hour to dance. And we get all sorts of people dancing. It was a bit of a social experiment because when it was first mooted that we do this project, people said, nah, Christchurch people won't dance, not in public. Um, and they do, and it's moved three times as places have been developed, the sites have been developed, or buildings next door have to be demolished, it, it can be moved. And it goes away for winter, so it's, it's gone into hibernation. But um, we have lots of different people coming down and running dance classes, and we get, as soon as one person gets onto the dance floor, more and more people come on board. So. It's a really nice mixing pot of people and cultures. And also it provides a venue for um, some of the dance troops that have lost um, their venues for practice. It's a great place for kids to hang out. Families love it. And there's so many celebrations that have happened there. And we know that Christchurch people over the last month have danced for 150 hours because we've counted. <laughs> <laughs> this is re-entry. It's a project that we ran with 14 to 17 year olds. 10 kids who came along to a workshop that we ran with a youth organisation, White Elephant, in Christchurch, came and asked us if they could do a project that would bring their friends back into the central city. There's no real reason to go into the central city. You know, there's everything you can do out in the malls. But these kids, they wanted to bring their friends in. They wanted to have a party. There's a little video clip that I've got, and if we've got enough time, I will show it at the end. Um, it's um, basically just a kid's rendition of what um, gap filler is and how they were going to plan an event and it was used on a Facebook page to promote um, their event. So they promote, they've, they, we helped them to plan it. Um, they came along and helped to decorate the site, set it all up and then in the evening we had 150 
kids turn up. It was the middle of winter, it was really cold, um, and there was going to be a building blown up right next door, so there were access issues. <laughs> we didn't find out about that until four days beforehand, so it was a bit of a headache. Um, there was a, luckily the kids didn't know about that. Um, <laughs> the, um, they showed movies, kids' movies, the ones that they'd made, um, and we had sound technicians um, from the local school, tertiary institution, and White Elephant did the DJing. So it was really run by youth. And they, I guess they felt some sort of satisfaction in having achieved what they set out to do. Rock on Eastside was a project we ran with another youth organisation. You've um, probably heard of Youth Town in Auckland. Um, they've got a branch down in Christchurch as well. They run after school workshops. So one hour for eight weeks we had. And the kids came on a gap tour and had a look at some of the projects we were running and decided they wanted to do their own gap filler in Linwood. So Linwood's um, quite a so low socio-economic sort of background um, and it's also an area w w which was quite badly devastated by the earthquake. Again 14 to 15, 16 year olds came along, um, 10 of them, and helped set up the site. This is a picture actually of um, a student volunteer army as well. They came down and gave us a hand. So it was a lot of um, collaboration to get up, up, up and running um, and we invited the um, community to come and paint rocks on the site so um, the kids interacted with the community and on wet days we went into the mall which was diagonally opposite um, and encouraged people to do some more rock painting. The site was only available to us for about two months so when we de decommissioned it um, we got a little bit of feedback from the community um, who said oh we really miss it, um, we'd really like it back uh, and one old woman who, who passes the site every day said that it was really exciting to walk past and see what had happened, the changes that were happening and she really loved the fact that there were young people down there doing stuff with their community. He Tangata was a workshop that we ran in the school holidays um, with local artist Tony Cribb, the creator of Tin Man. Um, he inspired the kids to paint self-portraits of themselves um, and do caricatures on the backs of old vinyl signs. It was a really popular event, we only had 20 places but we ended up having about 30, over 30 kids come down and um, do this and uh, it attracted a lot of attention um, and a lot of people came in and had a look and were amazed at what the kids came up with in a, an hour and a half basically. After lunch we took the pictures and we put them up around the cordon and in that way we kind of symbolically put, the kids put themselves back into the city, they repopulated the city, because the city is about people, yeah? Gap filler is the biggest project ever, <laughs> is the Summer Pallet Pavilion, 30, uh, 3,000 pallets and um, it was built in 2012 and it was meant to be pulled down this year. It was built by volunteers um, and yeah, we managed to raise $80,000 to keep it going for another year. 850 people um, pledged money, which is quite a huge number of people. We've had all sorts of events run in the, um, in the Pallet Pavilion. It's a community venue, so um, very little or low, low cost events run in the venue. We do close it occasionally for private functions, but not on um, week weekend days and we run a small bar in the winter, I mean in the summer. During the year we're running a small cafe as well. But all sorts of venues, all sorts of events happen there, from pirate parties to talent shows to buskers to shared dinners, all sorts, films, scrabble nights. It's kind of been adopted by the CPIT Jazz School as their venue um, on a Sunday afternoon, they go down and play. Uh, and they're currently organising an event to raise money for the Pallet Pavilion during summer, this coming summer. So the bar and the cafe and most of the events are run by volunteers. And this is where Erica comes in. Um, she's one of our star volunteers. Um, they're all, pretty much all, young people. Hi everyone, um, I'm Erica. Um, I'm 23 years old and um, as Sarah said that I'm a recent architectural graduate from the University of Auckland and currently I am one of, 
of many volunteers, youth volunteers from Gatfilla, and it's a real privilege to speak here as the voice of, of all the youth volunteers, um, thanks to CNZ and, and Gatfilla. Um, so a bit about myself, um, I have always been inspired by how different um, creative disciplines work collaboratively and um, really enjoy exploring ideas around creating experiences through event making. And um, I currently live in, in Christchurch, and um, currently live in Christchurch. And my and one of my ambitions is to extend on my thesis work that I finished last year on creating an experience economy <coughs> for the future Christchurch. So, um, well, especially after assisting with the um, successful Lux City late last year, um, I will talk about this uh, uh, in a while. So, through my thesis and investigation, I learned about Gatfield and what they do. And not long after I moved to Christchurch in the beginning of this year, um, I asked to be involved. So you might ask why, why I want to donate my time when I can work in a comfortable office and have a stable income. Um, I, I guess for me, uh, I saw this as an opportunity not only for me to meet new friends, but also um, being able to learn about this unfamiliar city that I've decided to um, live and stay in. Um, it was. And it was really important for me to understand the context of Christchurch and where my, my skills would fit in before I continue on my journey into becoming an architect. And through um, being involved in um, Gap Filler, I was able to force myself to talk with local people, um, listen to their stories about the city and what their opinions and thoughts are, are on the future of Christchurch. And also through promoting um, Gap Filler projects and um, directing sort of... Uh, uh, tourists that come through the pavilion, I was able to quickly orientate myself and also pass on my knowledge to, to others. Um, first, I signed up to be a barista volunteer at um, the pavilion cafe that just recently started. Um, and then I moved on to um, expanding to be to coordinate other volunteers, youth volunteers at the pavilion and also organising events such as um, the Hidden Talent Show and um, the Social Soup fundraising events and various other um, music gigs. And I guess through that um, I was able to, to really get into what I wanted to explore and providing this experience through, um, through being involved in, at the Pallet Pavilion. And um, today I want to briefly talk about two case studies. Um, it will really give you um, an understanding of why I was and, and will continue to participate in, in um, creative projects as a youth and also working with other young um, individuals. Case study one, uh, I really want to talk to you about this uh, particular volunteer. His name is Sean. He used to be a troubled youth and got onto the wrong side of the law a few years back. Um, he was involved in the building of the pavilion as a way to give back to the community. When the cafe started, um, he, he came in to ask if he was um, able to learn how to make coffee. And when we went into the session this morning, John was talking about saying yes and being able to say yes. And this was one of the cases when we in Gatfiller um, said yes to this, this youth and say yes we will, we will take this chance to give you more time and to supervise you on site so you can get this experience. And then I, I learnt that his dream was actually to have his own cafe and being able to sell his own baking as well. Um, but when he started off he, he was really shy and, and really uncertain and I was the only person he would ever talk to. But um, through training him how to make coffee and also um, encouraging him to talk with people that come through the pavilion, um, he, he slowly gained confidence and became really organised and um, energetic and he was willing to come regularly to, to the pavilion to keep, to keep um, training his skills. So um, with the increased social skills that he gained, I no longer, he no longer needs me on site to supervise him and he's um, handling his own shifts alone now. So in the last three months, um, <coughs> I saw um, the impacts on Sean and I think it made a bigger difference on his life more than others. Um, case study two, uh, Luxity. Maybe some of you have heard um, about this uh, light show last year in the um, city centre of Christchurch. Um, this was a creative project that involved over 350 architectural and design students from all over New Zealand. 
um, it created a city out of light for one night. Um, students designed 16 different installations that used light in conjunction with large scale machinery such as cranes, if you could see there's two cranes that were holding up um, installations and all of them were partnered up with local businesses such as um, performance organisations, uh, hospitality, restaurants, um, fashion groups um, to, help, to help them sort of um, promote their own business as well. When, when, I, was doing, when I was doing my thesis last year, um, I put my hand up to become the project assistant of this um, event and also one of uh, the teaching assistants for one of the projects. Um, so I could also be involved in the event creation, event making, marketing processes and understanding and develop the development of various projects for this event. Um, at the time I did not know what I was getting myself into because I was juggling a whole lot of things at the same time and it was really frustrating, I was really depressed at a certain period of time. But um, after an amazing night um, in October where 20,000 people turned up, um, I, was, I was so shocked. I, I, I was standing in the middle of Gloucester Street staring at the smiling people and how they're enjoying it. Um, I had tears in my eyes. Um, I, gave this, I, gave a, it gave me a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment and also it gave a sense of hope to the city. And I guess that was one of the primary reasons that I decided to move to Christchurch to continue my journey and, and create something that this, the, the people would enjoy about their own cities. And this is, I guess this is also a really good example of how students and young people are willing to be involved in creative projects um, other than the ones in their own cities. And um, uh, the, the achievement, the, the accomplishment and the, the reward they gained from this experience was really powerful. I believe that young people shape the future and creative projects raise um, personal skills and increase access to job opportunities. Um, after, after I was involved in Gatfiller, I, um, I, I am also involved in TEDx Christchurch this year doing their branding design. And I, through, through these um, involvement on, in all these projects, I was um, able, uh, they, they were able to address my own needs and my interests and giving me the opportunity to meet new people and make connections for, um, that were valuable for my future career. And most, well not most importantly, but importantly enough, they create this really informal and enjoyable atmosphere for me to want to work in. Through so being, being involved in um, Gap Filler and Luxity, I, I, I am also acting as um, assistant coordinator for what's called Studio Christchurch and it's a platform that, it's an extended platform from um, Lux City that um, continues the notion of collaboration between all the New Zealand architectural schools to create um, creative architectural proposals for the future of Christchurch. And I believe that the contribution of young people to creative projects is key to maintaining their motivation and um, commitment to other forms of participation. Um, as, an, and, uh, as an example, I was recently um, um, invited back to the University of Auckland for one of the student reviews. Um, I noticed that the same students that were involved in Lux City ha still had the buzz and the vibe inside them. And you can clearly see that their attitudes towards their work, their presentation and communication skills and their approach to their design thinking have changed. And, and a sense of confidence was seen. And especially um, the notion of collaboration was really evident. They were willing to share information amongst each other and, and grow as, 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 as a group. And that, that was really important and, and really amazing to see. Um, youth um, these days have a really minimal sort of minimal opportunities and lack in experience and social skills and I think creative projects provide the gateway to reality and a connection to the real world and by engaging um, with the academia and the public realm um, it builds platforms for multidisciplinary systems of collaboration for a better future. Um, the, the point I'm making here is that um, 
we are the future, the youth is the future, and um, by getting us involved in creative projects, it uh, changes the way we think and approach things, learning by doing, um, putting theory into practice, and in this case, um, Gap Fuller makes this happen. Thanks, Erica. Energy, vitality, that's what we all need. Um, so Gapfiller is a creative urban regeneration initiative. Um, the kind of way that we work is really exciting for young people. We experiment, we don't, well, we don't set out to fail, but we, we do experiment. And um, if we fail, then at least we've tried it. Um, we innovate. We take ideas from the community and we add a little something else to it. Um, we support people to do their own projects. We lead by example. We try to do new stuff. Um, we collaborate with others and other organisations. Um, and we try as much as possible to repurpose and recycle our projects. This book fridge was a, um, an idea that came up from a, a local community person um, because of the lack of um, libraries that were open initially after the first earthquake. It was only meant to last a few months, but um, the community really supports it and uses it and maintains it, um, and it's still working. It's a book exchange, by the way. Um, there's a campaign running at the moment. Um, we're all a little bit tired and low in Christchurch. We've got um, lots of battles that we're fighting um, with insurance companies and things. Um, so this campaign gets us to think about our well-being and some of the things we can do. Um, these are the kind of things that we at Gapfler try to do anyway. So um, I know personally um, it's really important to connect, to volunteer, to take notice, to keep learning and be active. So our engagement strategy in Gapfiller is to get people engaged with us and what we do. We tell lots of stories. We go out and we present um, to groups, to schools, um, to youth organisations. And um, we also get approached a lot. It, um, it's amazing. We probably do two or three interviews with kids from um, international, um, national uh, and, and locally. Um, we also people come and ask us to be in documentaries um, and we are we're always asking for people to retell our story it's not about just coming and listening but you know go out and find some more stories to tell because there's actually not just the gap filler doing these projects it's a whole group of people a whole lot of people um, we encourage projects that see and experience the city in new ways we work on real projects and we and ask youth if they can come along and help. They often ask us if they can come and help. Once they hear about projects or, or play a round of gap golf, they say, well, you know, can we, can we come and make a golf course? Um, and, you know, we, we support that as much as we can. Um, and if somebody comes to us with an idea, then we will work through it with them um, and, and help them, to hopefully, to um, realise it. So our projects work because um, I think it gives the youth a feeling of being able to make a difference. In a city where they don't really have much say about what's going on at the moment, um, they get to do something. They physically can realise something. Um, they get a chance to um, connect with others. They get to design something. They're involved in the process of design. If, we, if we're making something and volunteers are involved, we often give them the opportunity to give a give whatever it is that a name or to be a part in the design of the making of the whatever it is. Um, it's a real experience. Quite often students are only given concepts to work on um, and they all learn skills. I'm learning skills every day because <laughs> um, each project that we do is so very different. Um, and I guess what it really ultimately does, it gives us all a stake in our city and it gives us hope. I have to constantly remind myself that what works with kids is to keep it real, keep it simple and keep it fun. Thanks to our funders, um, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without money and support in kind. <laughs>